All right, so we are here at Animal Kingdom, and there is nobody. Home kit accessories. Nobody. This is awesome. So we're in line for the safari. There is nobody. So, yeah. There's the line, and that goes straight to the safari. Right there. That's it. Huh? Nope. And as we say here in Harambe, twin day. Adrian and Jumbo, everyone. My name Get is Kim. Your safari guide and driver today as we journey across the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Now it can get a little bit bumpy out there in certain areas of proper terrain on the reserve. So please do make sure that you're all staying safely seated throughout the entire journey. And please keep all hands, arms, legs, feet, heads, and tails inside the vehicle at all times. As an added safety reminder, please also make sure that you are keeping your face coverings over your nose and mouth throughout our entire adventure as well. And with that, we've gotten the all clear signal from the warden to enter the reserve. So we're now making our way through the Little Ituri Forest. And right over on the right hand side, we're getting very lucky already. We've got pretty great visibility of two okapis just across the clearing from us there. Now, Okabi is our very unique looking animal. They do almost look like they are a mix of several different species, but despite the zebra party pants that they seem to be wearing, Okabis are actually only closely related to giraffes. One of my very favorite features they share in common with their giraffe cousins is an extra long prehensile tongue. It can be up to about 12 to 14 inches long. And that word prehensile means they can use their tongue just like a finger to reach out, grab hold of leaves and branches to eat, or sometimes even to clean their own eyes, ears, and noses, since that tongue is long enough to reach all the way around to the back of their own head. Look where your camera's pointing, honey. And many of the animals that call this forest home do rely on some pretty impressive camouflage in order to blend in with their surroundings and stay safe from any predators out here. We may need to look a little bit more closely in these bushes all around us here. See who we can spot. It does look like just over on the right hand side, if you look in amongst the bushes there up the hill, see you can him? see a couple of different species of antelopes. The ones we can see a little bit better closer to us with that lighter tan coloration are greater kudu. But a little bit further up the hill there, you might also be able to make out the shapes of some bongos with that darker, more reddish coloration to their fur. Those bongos have also been nicknamed the ghost of the forest. They do blend in really well with the shadows, thanks to that darker coloration. However, both the kudu and the bongos have the same thin white stripes along their sides. That's also a really useful camouflage for being able to blend in with the sunlight dappling through the trees, as well as some of these taller grasses out here. all of these amazing 
forest dwelling animals is a great reminder of just how important it is to help protect those forest homes out there. And one of the easiest ways that we can do that is just by making sure that when we're out shopping, we're looking for rainforest friendly products. You can look at the packaging to see if they're certified by the Rainforest Alliance. That's usually going to be things like coffee and chocolate. Or with paper products, you can also look for products that are certified by the Forest Stewardship Council. Now as we make our way past the Safi River here, over on the right hand side you might already be able to spot a couple of Nile hippopotamuses down in the water there. And where we've seen a couple of hippos, we're likely to see a few more up ahead since they are very social animals. They're usually found in a large group called a bloat. So as we continue to make our way past and around the river here, it does look like there are quite a few more hippos right over on the left hand side of us as well. Look where your camera's pointing, honey. Now hippos are mostly nocturnal animals. So they do spend most of their day doing exactly what you're seeing them do now, resting, sleeping in the water there. That helps them to keep their large bodies nice and cool and to protect their skin from sunburn. They are also able to hold their breath for up to about six to eight minutes at a time. So they can even rest down under the water. And nesting on that island in the center of the river, you can also see quite a few pink-backed pelicans. And if you're questioning my pelican identification skills, I don't blame you, since those pelican backs don't look particularly pink to me either. But they get that name because during their mating season, pink-backed pelicans' backs do become a very vibrant pink color, which is visible even through their feathers. Daddy, there's flamingo here. Now we yeah. continue to be on the lookout for any more hippos make our way around this next bend. As I mentioned before, there may be more hippos down there submerged underneath the water that we can't even quite make out the shape of. Being as large and heavy as they are, hippos aren't really particularly good swimmers, but they can usually walk along the bottom of the river just fine and then bounce their way to the surface for those breaths of air. As we're crossing this old bridge here, you'll want to keep your eyes open out to the left-hand side. Looks like there are quite a few Nile crocodiles all along the riverbank there and down, down in the there? water below us. Out there. Nile crocodiles are the largest crocodilians found in Africa. Reaching an average length of about 16 feet. Now most of their diet is usually made up of fish, but they have been known to take down prey as large as a wildebeest with those powerful jaws of theirs. couple of bins here up ahead. You may start to notice the environment. Look where your camera's us. pointing. Starting to shift Look a little, where your camera's pointing. Different. We're starting to emerge from the forest now and make our way out across the savanna. Now out here on the savanna, it tends to be a slightly drier ecosystem. And there's a lot more open space in between the plant life. Because of that, a lot of the wildlife that we'll be on the lookout for out here on the savanna is very well adapted for speed and agility in order to make their way across those open spaces very quickly if they're ever being chased by any predators. Ooh, I see giraffes. You'll see. Now, as the savanna is starting to open up ahead of us, one of the first animals we can spot out here are these giraffes that you can see all amongst the trees there. They're closer to me. A group of giraffes is also sometimes called a tower. And they definitely do tower over everyone else out here on the savannah. Yeah. In fact, they are not just the tallest land mammals in Africa, but in the entire world. They can stand up to about 18 to 20 feet tall. And that impressive point? height of theirs helps them to reach those leaves high up at the tops of the trees, just like you see these giraffes doing here now. On our left hand side, it looks like we're also passing by a den of African painted dogs. Good look. If you look very closely inside of that rock den there, you can see a couple of them taking a nap in the shade of their den. We'll get a little bit closer as we pull further forward here. Now these African painted dogs are also sometimes called African wild dogs. But you can see how their fur does almost look like someone painted those beautiful splotches onto them. And African painted dogs are also the most successful predators in Africa. 
largely thanks to their incredible teamwork and communication within their packs. Looks like we'll be getting a slightly closer view of those giraffes a little bit further up ahead here as we pass in between those trees. Oh, there's a giraffe yeah, on Giraffes actually side. spend so much of their day and night eating those leaves that they actually play a really important role within that savanna ecosystem as well. By eating so many of those leaves from the treetops, they actually help to kind of thin out those treetops and allow more sunlight to be able to reach shorter plants and grasses growing down below. Which means that these giraffes Stand are actually side. also helping to provide You're gonna come real close to one. animals grazing across the savanna around them. Now you can see that a couple of these giraffes here, especially on the right, are a little bit shorter. So they're most likely slightly younger than the one we see here on the left. But giraffes are born already standing, about six feet tall. So they're definitely never short at any age. Did you get it on camera? Life. Now it's also not quite as common Look, to bug. see them lie down like that to rest. Most of the time when they sleep, they'll sleep standing up so that they can be ready to be on the move quickly if any predators do approach. In fact, sometimes they'll even sleep with their eyes still open, so it can be hard to tell if a giraffe you're looking at is asleep or awake. However, they don't need to sleep very often either. In order to prioritize as much time as possible for eating, the most important part of anyone's day, Look where your they camera's actually only need to sleep up to about 30 minutes per day. And they get most of that 30 minutes of sleep in very short little power naps. We're going to make our way across some more open grasslands a little bit further up ahead. But if you look over in the shade of these trees here on the hill on the left, you can see a few more giraffes as well. Look at them up there, honey. Definitely had a very lucky safari. You Point your camera safari. at them. Yeah. Now further across those grasslands up ahead of us, you may also be able to see the stripes of some Hartman's Mountain Zebras out there. Now if we were to look a little bit more closely at each one of those zebras, we find that each and every oh, one of yeah. those stripes kind of is side. just as unique as each of our fingerprints. And that's really helpful for any babies within the herd, any foals, should be able to follow closely behind their mother. They'll memorize her stripe pattern so they don't get lost within that large herd. You can also see quite a few wildebeest over lying down near those yeah. zebras. And closer to us up on this hill here, one of my favorite residents of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. These itty bitty antelopes here on our right are springboks. They are the smallest species of antelope found living here on the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. They only stand up to about three feet tall at the shoulder. But they are small but mighty little antelopes. And those little legs of theirs can actually help them spring up into the air up to about 13 feet high. They can even run up to 55 miles per hour at their top speed. So definitely a lot stronger than they look. Now in the shade of those palm trees a little bit further away from us on the right, you might also be able to see some massive horns poking out of the bushes there. Those are Ancoli cattle. Those horns thankfully are not nearly as heavy as they look like they would be, despite their large size. Inside of those horns there's actually a honeycomb-like structure which makes them much lighter. It also allows the cattle to circulate blood flow through those horns into their head, which is one of the ways they can keep cool on hotter days. Now we're now making our way past Monkey Point, which is named for a troop of mandrels who are often seen in this area right over on the left. Now you may also already be able to spot an African elephant across the water from us there on the right, but I'd encourage you to also keep your eyes open over on the left-hand side here in amongst those trees, rocks, and bushes. You can see the largest and most colorful monkey species, the mandrel. Not Wherever only do they have these bright are, red and pointed. blue markings on their faces, just like Rafiki from the Lion King, but you might notice the largest male there, the leader of the troop, also has quite a colorful butt. As we round this next bend here, we'll see if we can get a closer view of that African elephant as we make our way a little bit deeper into elephant country. Oh. Honey, come here. Just behind the trees there on the right hand side, it looks like look we are right going to get a pretty nice close up view of that African elephant. And there's a few ways that we can tell this is an African elephant. For one, they are much larger than their Asian cousins. They also have much larger ears, which are often said to be roughly the shape of the continent of Africa. 
Uh, the easiest way that we know that that is an African elephant is that we are in Africa right now. So that's the only kind of elephant that we should be seeing out here. Now we're gonna make our way a little bit deeper into elephant country, see if we can catch up with any more elephants. We do have one more slightly older bridge to make it across first. Just think happy elephant thoughts. There we go. Now that elephant that we saw before there was most likely male, since he seemed to be kind of hanging out in his own space. Female elephants tend to be a lot more social. They'll form a matriarchal herd, which means that moms and their calves are led by the oldest, wisest grandmother elephant among them. Who's usually gonna have the best mental map of all the best watering holes and feeding areas around them. And it looks like we are catching up with a matriarchal herd of African elephants just up ahead here on the left-hand side. Now, as we're catching up to these female elephants here up ahead, you may notice that they also have tusks, just like the male that we saw earlier. That's another big difference between African and Asian elephants. Only the male Asian elephants grow those tusks. Whereas both male and females of the African species have those beautiful ivory tusks on their faces. Now those tusks are also unfortunately one of the main reasons that elephants have become so endangered in the wild due to being poached for that ivory. They've also faced quite a few challenges with just being able to share their space Look. with humans. Since as you can probably tell, Where's elephants take up quite a lot of space. They also eat Eleanor, quite a lot every day, which can be pretty destructive if they happen to make their way across farmers' fields and eat some of those farmers' crops. That's also a big problem for those farmers since those crops are, of course, their livelihood. But researchers here on the Harambe Wildlife Reserve actually were able to come up with a pretty unique solution to helping those humans and elephants share their space. They were able to create special beehive fences to surround the farmer's land and even just the sound of bees buzzing can be enough to send a whole herd of elephants turning around facing the opposite direction. If anyone ever tells you that elephants are afraid of mice, that's not true. They're afraid of something much smaller, just those itty bitty bees out there. So those fences have done a great job to help protect both the elephants and humans from any of those dangerous conflicts. And it gives the farmers some extra income from being able to sell Here's the honey the from Mickey. those beehive fences as well. Right here. Definitely a win-win -win conservation success story for all involved. Here's your flamingos. In this next watering hole over here on the Look left, the we're also flamingos. passing by a whole They're flock great. of flamboyants of greater flamingos. Greater flamingos get that name because they are the largest flamingo species. So not necessarily because they're better than any of the smaller flamingos out there. Lesser flamingos happen to be my personal favorite. And the smallest flamingos that you can see on this island over here on the left are those little gray fluff balls with legs. Those are fairly young flamingo chicks there. Flamingo chicks hatch out completely gray, just like you see here. But as they continue to grow up and eat more and more shrimp, rich in that beta carotene pigment, they'll get more and more of that beautiful pink coloration, just like their parents. is a nice big mud wallow over here in the center of this clearing on the left. So we'll definitely want to be on the lookout for any white rhinos that may have recently passed through for a mud bath there. Both rhinos and elephants have very thick skin, but that skin can still be sensitive to sunburn and even insect bites. So mud can make a nice extra protective layer for them. It's also just a great way to cool off on a hot day, especially since elephants and rhinos having that extra thick skin also means that they aren't able to sweat like we can to cool themselves off. And it does look like oh, there, there might be are. a few of those white rhinos just up at the top of this hill here, resting in the shade of those trees on our right hand side. You can kind of just see the tops of their backs and their ears there. We'll see if we can catch a better peek of them as we continue around this bend here. White rhinos are the largest of hey, all bud. five rhino species. Yeah. They also happen to be the most social. Yep. So a small herd, like the ones you can see at the top of that hill there on the right, is also sometimes called a crash of rhinos. And that's a pretty fitting name for a group of rhinos as well, because rhinos do have very poor eyesight. So they have been known to crash into things by mistake out there. 
There we go. You can get a slightly better view of those beautiful faces of theirs there on the right hand side. Wow. Those beautiful horns on their faces are not made of ivory like the tusks of the elephants. They're actually made out of the same keratin as our hair and fingernails. And just like we all have different hairstyles we prefer, rhinos have different horn styles and they'll shape their horns by rubbing them up against trees, rocks, and logs in their habitat. Now if we look very closely in the shade of these trees on the left hand side, all the way further back in that clearing there, you might be able to spot the fastest running land mammal, the cheetah. They have been known to reach a top speed of up to about 75 miles per hour. They are more of a sprinter than a marathon runner, so usually they're only going to be running that fast in very short bursts during their hunts. Cheetahs also happen to be one of the only big cat species who, instead of preferring to keep to their own space, will often live and hunt together as teams. And in fact, the only other big cat species that will live and hunt socially this way is the lion. Now, speaking of lions, these tall rock structures over here on our left are usually a pretty good area to be on the lookout for lions since those rocks can give them a really good viewpoint of the rest of the savanna around them. Unlike cheetahs, however, lions are nocturnal hunters. So they're most active under the cover of darkness. And in fact, they've been known to sleep up to about 20 hours of the day. Oh, Look at the rhino. There is another of those white rhinos up on the top of that hill there on the right hand side as well and it does look like just up ahead we are in luck there is at least one lion up on those rocks Ooh. you can see the male well, there with pointing, his majestic honey. mane where's your camera pointing now during the night when it is time for hunting it'll be the lionesses or female lions within the pride who will go out hunting while the male there will actually stay behind to defend their territory and also to take care of any cubs within their pride as well. You see them? Yeah. Side behind the tall grass. Look at that face. So we still need to find what? I don't know. I think we saw a bunch. <laughs> no, it's in here. Now over here on the left, these large holes that you see in amongst those rocks and logs are warthog burrows. And it does look like there's at least one warthog lying down in the shade there. They do blend in really well with the rocks and logs underneath oh, I the see shade him. of those trees. He's right there next to that tree. There Looks may be like a, a rock. few more warthogs resting in some of those burrows down there as well. They are the largest burrowing mammals. So they usually prefer to work smarter, not harder. So they don't dig their own burrows normally. Instead, they'll find burrows left behind by smaller mammals and do some remodeling with their own tusks to make them suit their own size and needs. Lying down in the center of those tall grasses there on the right hand side, you can also see a couple of very special antelopes called bontabox. One of the most special things about those bontabox antelopes is that at one time there were only 17 of them left alive in the whole world. They were very endangered due to being hunted for those beautiful furs of theirs. But thankfully, the farmers who owned the land where those remaining Bontabox lived decided they wanted to play their part to help save that species. And they built a nice fence around all of that land to help keep poachers out. And since Bontabox are not nearly as good at jumping as most of the other antelopes we've seen today, they're not very good at jumping at all, in fact, those fences kept them nice and safe inside those protected lands where their numbers were able to continue to grow. Their population has since spread to more and more protected land throughout Africa, including the Harambe Wildlife Reserve, reaching sustainable populations. That's one of my favorite stories, mostly because it's a really great example of how a small group of people can get together, working together and making a big difference for conservation, even sometimes saving a whole species, just like the Bontabox. The word Harambe, that our village and reserve is named after actually means to come together because we do hope that you'll all come together with us to work for the conservation of these amazing animals out here and there are some really easy ways that we can play our part for conservation even just with small changes and choices in our daily lives like shopping for those rainforest friendly products that i mentioned earlier as well as reducing the amount of trash that we produce 
opting for reusable water bottles and shopping bags whenever possible, and recycling whatever you can, including any old electronics and batteries, which can help to limit the amount of mining for metals like coltan, which takes place in a lot of those African animals' native ranges. One of my very favorite ways we can play our part for conservation, though, is just by learning more about wildlife around the world and some of the challenges that they face, and then sharing what we've learned with others. That's definitely my very favorite part of my job here as a safari guide. I do hope you've learned a little bit more about some of these amazing African animals while on safari today. It's been a pleasure to have you on safari with me. Once again, my name is Hannah. And here in Harambe, we don't like to say goodbye. That feels much too sad, much too final. So I do have one more Swahili phrase to share with you all instead, and that is kwaharini. Kwaharini means to go well. I do hope you'll all go well, go wild out there, make a difference. Rescue your deer in Disney's Animal Kingdom. We'll be heading to the second dock just a little bit further up ahead. But the other truck that's there now should be just about to move out of the way. This is also a great opportunity while we're just waiting for our dock there up ahead. So make sure you're checking your rows. Make sure you have all of your personal belongings with you and all of your loved ones that you first boarded the safari with today. on your butt. Huh? Yep. You're gonna put it on your face. Oh, in my pocket. Or in the backpack. Put it in the backpack. Look at how packed all these fish are. But there's another piece of glass keeping these fish tight. I see this now. Oh no. Nothing. Look, you guys, I earned my first bag. Cool. Here's the camera. Big fish. I'm looking. I don't ever remember coming in here. This is beautiful. Remember that nest? Come here. You remember that nest you were talking about? See that yellow bird right there? Right there, that's the one that built it. Look at him. He's peeking out of his hole. That's so cool. Ready your dot. You have a grill in front of you. Look at her.
What's she doing? She's checking the time. See him hiding back there? She just sunbathing. You gonna film? Mm-hmm. What do you think of that gorilla right there? She's looking. You can go up to the fence.